Mr. Demello, several, several countries have been uh, reforming their institutional and territorial structure in recent years, uh, often through rescaling and merging small municipalities. Does this uh, help to make them more successful? It's a very interesting experience that we see in Europe nowadays. No? You mentioned the case of amalgamation of local governments, but there are other experiences that have basically that try to achieve the same goal, which is to create scale no, at the local level. Take, for instance, the association of municipalities that are in place in many countries, like France, for instance, and Hungary here next to Poland. It's basically associations where municipalities get together to provide services, water, uh, uh, and sanitation, for instance, or transport, uh, at a scale that is bigger than the actual size of a local government. Basically, if you amalgamate or if you create other associational activities, you achieve the same goal. It depends on what uh, countries find the best way forward. And how is Poland performing in terms of public governance and investments? Well, Poland is a country that has grown very fast. It's one of the fastest growing countries in Europe uh, for uh, you know, over two decades. Nowadays, the rate of growth of Poland has come down, and it's very important then to find the, 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 the dynamism that Poland needs to continue to grow and to continue to close the gap in income relative to the more prosperous uh, countries uh, in the OECD. Gov uh, Poland has done a lot. Uh, there is still more that needs to be done, and that includes, of course, uh, uh, harnessing all the dynamism of investment uh, as well, which is the important topic of this conference. Uh, the OECD and the COR share the same com committee of the regions share the same uh, ambitions in terms of local uh, capacity building, and how can both institutions um, uh, join their forces to achieve that? We work very well with the Committee of the Regions. They are very supportive of many of our activities. Uh, there are many projects that we basically we work together towards uh, our common objectives. Take, for instance, the principles that the OECD has put out on the governance uh, of, uh, of investment, the multi-layer governance of investment. The Committee of the Regions has endorsed it. Uh, we put out this recommendation last year. It was approved by the Council of the OECD. It was endorsed by the Committee of the Regions. Regions. Now we are moving on and we are conducting a very big survey throughout the membership of the Committee of the Regions to understand better their best uh, the, the, their practices, what they find that works uh, well uh, based on their experience. So it's a very interesting exercise and we, uh, and we are very grateful for the Committee of the Regions to, to partner with us uh, in doing that. And with regards to regions, uh, do you uh, in the OECD measure mainly national uh, indicators or you uh, switch a bit um, into uh, focus on uh, regions? Because I saw, for example, a um, website, uh, Regional Wellbeing, which is quite a good initiative in my opinion. Do, uh, are there any other uh, initiatives connected with uh, regions? Absolutely. In fact, we've done, uh, we carry out very, very frequently um, a collection of indicators of fiscal decentralization, for instance, uh, indicators such as, um, you know, the expenditure, what type, how much regions uh, spend, uh, revenue, how much they collect, what taxes they use, basically to map all, the, vari all the, the different varieties of experiences uh, across the OECD membership. We do that at the regional level. We've been doing that for quite some time now. We also have uh, an outlook uh, for, uh, for regions in which we try to look at very different aspects of performance, income, jobs, education, health, uh, all different types of indicators that we produce at the regional level. You mentioned the well-being initiative. That's a very interesting one because the OECD started working on well-being a few years back, but we were looking uh, at, at countries basically. And now since last year we started to look at regions. And why is it important? Because, you know, policies take place at the local level. Uh, local governments and regions are basically the point of contact between societies, between individuals, between citizens and their government. So it's very important to understand their needs, to understand their performance, to understand the demands of the population, uh, which is better to understand really at the regional level than at the national level. We gain more insights. 
And is uh, society active on that website? Yes, yes, it's very much so, and we have uh, very interesting, uh, um, basically, feedback uh, from people who use the, feed, uh, the, the, the website. We've done also case studies with policymakers in regions uh, across the world, which are very interesting as well because they allow us to put that methodology, to put that wealth of information to the service of policymakers, to understand how they put together their own development policies on the basis of indicators that can go beyond income, can take a much more holistic approach uh, to what, uh, what citizens find important. And what are the biggest challenges for regions um, in the European Union, for all the regions in one union? It's very hard to generalize because regions are very different. There are regions that are still facing high unemployment because of the crisis, slow growth. Other regions are facing other challenges that have to do with maintaining a pace of innovation, a pace of improvement in living standards. So what is common to all regions, I would say, is that we need to work to always maintain high growth because high growth is what will deliver the improvements in living standards uh, that societies expect uh, of, their, of their leaders and their governments.